Spark as a data processing framework was developed at UC Berkeley's AMP Lab by Matei Saharia in 2009. In 2010, it became an open source project under a Berkeley software distribution license. In the year 2013, the project was donated to the Apache Software Foundation and the license was changed to Apache 2.0. In February 2014, Spark became an Apache top-level project. By November 2014, Spark was used by the engineering team at Databricks, a company founded by the creators of Apache Spark, to set a world record in large-scale sorting. Now, Databricks provides commercial support and certification for taking the Spark programming test. At present, Spark exists as a next-generation, real-time, and batch processing framework. Let's try to understand what batch and real-time processing mean. We will use this information in the subsequent slides to compare Spark with MapReduce, both of which are data processing framework in Hadoop. In case of batch processing, a large amount of data or transactions are processed in a single run over a time period. The associated jobs generally run entirely without any manual intervention. Additionally, the entire data is pre-selected and fed using command line parameters and scripts. In typical cases, batch processing is used to execute multiple operations, handle heavy data load, generate reports, and manage data workflow which is offline. An example is to create daily or hourly reports to aid decision making. On the other hand, real-time processing occurs instantaneously on data entry or command receipt. It needs to execute within stringent response time constraints. An example is fraud detection. The need for Spark was created by the limitations of MapReduce, which is another data processing framework in Hadoop. Let's see what these limitations are. MapReduce is suitable for batch processing, where data is processed as a periodic job. Thus, it takes time to process data and provide results if the data is high. Depending on the amount of data and the number of nodes in the cluster to complete a job, it just takes minutes to process the data. However, it is not a good choice for real-time processing. MapReduce is also not suitable for writing trivial operations, such as filter and join. To write such operations, you might need to rewrite the jobs using the MapReduce framework, which becomes complex because of the key value pattern. This pattern is required to be followed in reducer and mapper codes. MapReduce doesn't work so well with large data on the network. The reason is that it takes a lot of time to copy the data, which may cause network bandwidth issues. It works on the data locality principle, and hence works well on the node where the data resides. MapReduce is also unsuitable for online transaction processing, or OLTP, which includes a large number of short transactions. Since it works on the batch-oriented framework, it lacks latency of seconds or subseconds. Additionally, MapReduce is unfit for processing graphs. Graphs represent the structures to explore relationships between various points. For example, finding common friends in social media sites like Facebook. Hadoop has the Apache Giraffe library for such cases. It runs on top of MapReduce and adds to the complexity. Another important limitation is its unsuitability for iterative program execution. Some use cases, like k-means, need such execution where data needs to be processed again and again to refine results. MapReduce runs from the start every time as it is stateless executor. Spark is an open source cluster computing framework which addresses all of the limitations of MapReduce. It is suitable for real-time processing, trivial operations, and processing larger data on a network. It is also suitable for OLTP, graphs, and iterative execution. As compared to the disk-based two-stage MapReduce of Hadoop, Spark provides up to 100 times faster performance for a few applications with in-memory primitives. Fast performance makes it suitable for machine learning algorithms as it allows programs to load data into the memory of a cluster and create the data constantly. A Spark project comprises various components such as Spark Core and Resilient Distributed Datasets or RDDs, Spark SQL, Spark Streaming, Machine Learning Library, or MLlib, and GraphX. Let's discuss the components of Spark. The first component, Spark Core and RDDs, 
are the foundation of the entire Spark project. They provide basic input-output functionalities, distributed task dispatching, and scheduling. Let's look at RDD closely. RDDs are the basic programming abstraction and is a collection of data that is partitioned across machines logically. RDDs can be created by applying coarse-grained transformations on the existing RDDs or by referencing external datasets. The examples of these transformations are reduce, join, filter, and map. The abstraction of RDDs is exposed similarly as in-process and local collections through a Language Integrated Application Programming Interface, or API, in Python, Java, and Scala. As a result of the RDD abstraction, the complexity of programming is simplified as the manner in which applications change RDDs is similar to changing local data collections. The second component is Spark SQL, which resides on the top of Spark Core. It introduces Schema RDD, which is a new data abstraction and supports semi-structured and structured data. Schema RDD can be manipulated in any of the provided domain-specific languages, such as Java, Scala, and Python by the Spark SQL. Spark SQL also supports SQL with Open Database Connectivity or Java Database Connectivity, commonly known as ODBC or JDBC server and command line interfaces. The third component is Spark Streaming. Spark Streaming leverages the fast scheduling capability of Spark Core for streaming analytics, ingesting data in small batches, and performing RDD transformations on them. With this design, the same application code set written for batch analytics can be used on a single engine for streaming analytics. The fourth component of Spark is Machine Learning Library, also known as MLlib. It lies on top of Spark and is a distributed machine learning framework. MLlib applies various common statistical and machine learning algorithms. With its memory-based architecture, it is nine times faster than the Apache Mahout's Hadoop disk-based version. In addition, the library performs even better than Valpowl, Wabbit, or VW. The VW project is a fast, out-of-core learning system sponsored by Microsoft. The last component, GraphX, also lies on the top of Spark and is a distributed graph processing framework. For the computation of graphs, it provides an API and an optimized runtime for the Pregel abstraction. Pregel is a system for large-scale graph processing. The API can also model the Pregel abstraction. We discussed earlier that Spark provides up to 100 times faster performance for a few applications with in-memory primitives. Let's discuss the application of in-memory processing using column-centric databases. In column-centric databases, similar information can be stored together, and hence data can be stored with more compression and efficiency. It also permits the storage of large amounts of data in the same space, thereby reducing the amount of memory required for performing a query. It also increases the speed of processing. In an in-memory database, the entire information is loaded into memory, eliminating the need for indices, aggregates, optimized databases, star schemas, and cubes. With the use of in-memory tools, compression algorithms can be implemented that decrease the in-memory size, even beyond what is required for hard disks. Users querying data loaded in memory is different from caching. In-memory processing also helps to avoid performance bottlenecks and slow database access. Caching is a popular method for speeding up the performance of a query, where caches are subsets of a very particular organized data, which are already defined. With in-memory tools, data analysis can be flexible in size and can be accessed within seconds by concurrent users with an excellent analytics potential. This is possible as data lies completely in memory. In theoretical terms, this leads to data access improvement that is 10,000 to 1 million times fast when compared to a disk. In addition, it reduces the performance tuning needed by IT professionals and therefore provides faster data access for end users. With in-memory processing, it is possible to access visually rich dashboards 
and existing data sources. This ability is provided by several vendors. In turn, in-memory processing allows end users and business analytics to create customized queries and reports without any need of extensive expertise or training. We have already discussed that Spark provides performance, which in turn offers developers a rewarding experience. Spark is chosen over MapReduce, mainly for its performance advantages and versatility. Apart from these, another critical advantage is its development experience along with language flexibility. Spark provides support to various development languages like Java, Scala, and Python, and will likely support R as well. In addition, Spark has the capability to define functions in line. With the temporary exception of Java, a common element in these languages is that they provide methods to express operations using Lambda functions and closures. Using Lambda closures, you can use the application core logic to define the functions in line, which helps to create easy to comprehend codes and preserve application flow. Let's look at MapReduce in the Hadoop ecosystem. The Hadoop ecosystem, which allows you to store large files on various machines, uses MapReduce for batch analytics that is as easy as it is distributed in nature. On the other hand, Apache Spark supports both real-time and batch processing. In Hadoop, third-party support is also available. For example, by using ETL, Talented Tools, various batch-oriented workflows can be designed. In addition, it supports PIG and Hive queries that enable non-Java developers to use and prepare batch workflows using SQL scripts. You can perform every type of data processing using Spark that you can execute in Hadoop. For batch processing, Spark Batch can be used over Hadoop MapReduce. For structured data analysis, Spark SQL can be implemented using SQL. For machine learning analysis, the machine learning library can be used for clustering, recommendation, and classification. For interactive SQL analysis, Spark SQL can be used instead of Impala. In addition, for real-time streaming data analysis, Spark streaming can be used in place of a specialized library like Storm. Spark has three main advantages, which are provide speed capability, combines of various processing types, and supports Hadoop. The feature of speed is critical to process large data sets, as this implies the difference of waiting for hours or minutes and exploring the data interactively. Spark has extended the MapReduce model to support computations like stream processing and interactive queries, supporting run computations in memory with respect to speed. Also, its related system is more effective when compared to MapReduce, to run complex applications on a disk. This adds to the speed capability of Spark. Spark covers various workloads that require different distributed systems such as streaming, iterative algorithms, and batch applications. As these workloads are supported on the same engine, combining different processing types is easy. Spark is normally required in the production of data analysis pipelines. The combination feature also allows easy management of separate tools. Spark is capable of creating distributed data sets from any file that is stored in the Hadoop distributed file system or any other supported storage systems. You must note that Spark does not need Hadoop. It just supports the storage systems that implement the APIs of Hadoop and sequence files, Parquet, Avro, text files, and all other input-output formats of Hadoop. Now the question is why unification matters. Unification not only provides developers with the advantage of learning only one platform, but also allows users to take their apps everywhere. The graphic shows the apps and the systems that can be combined with Spark. A Spark project includes various closely integrated components for distributing, scheduling, and monitoring applications with many computational tasks across a computing cluster or various worker machines. The Spark core engine is general purpose and fast. As a result, it empowers various higher level components that are specialized for different workloads like machine learning or SQL. These components can interoperate closely. Another important advantage is that it integrates tightly, allowing you to create applications that easily combine different processing models. An example is the ability to write an application using machine learning to categorize data in real time as it is ingested from sources of streaming. 
Additionally, it allows analysts to query the data, which results through SQL. Moreover, data scientists and engineers can access the same data through the Python shell for ad hoc analysis and in standalone batch applications. For all this, the IT team needs to maintain one system only. Hey, want to become an expert in big data? Then subscribe to the Simply Learn channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in big data, click here.